Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to TNO. I'm Hell Mokalover, and we have one big ol' rack right in front of us. So, Burgundian demands loyal to <clears throat> Herr Himmler as more than just simple obedience. It is a way of being, a way of carrying oneself in the world that serves the interests of Burgundy and the Aryan race. When Herr Himmler suggests we target dissident groups more strongly, we must reorient all structures of the state to utterly decimating traitors of the Reich. When the Burgundians send recommendations for the reformation of the state into her natural Aryan structure, <clears throat> We must begin radically restructuring immediately for the good of the Aryan race, of course. When true orders come in, we must do more than immediately follow them. We must become disciplined. Or, we must become disciplined? Our benefactor orders us for the good of the race, and our race is defined by principle and order. No questions asked, no hesitation. There is no room for that, not in the service of Herr Himmler. We await the re requests of Herr Himmler. Himmler may now make requests of us. It would be advisable to fulfill them. we got a couple comments to go through. Let's continue with our focus tree. Send them supplies. During the outbreak of the Bürgerkrieg, the Oldenstadt funneled us a variety of military equipment, vital military equipment, to aid us in our grand struggle. Now the Reichsführer orders us to return these military supplies immediately, from the largest tanks to the smallest food rations. It is only fitting that we return what they helped us with. Refill the reserves. The Oldenstadt's reserves have apparently been drained following their intense support for Heydrich during the Bürgerkrieg. <clears throat> Reichsführer Himmler has ordered us to send vast amounts of our supplies westward, including fuel. Furthermore, he requests high amounts of manpower for the Oldenstadt, ranging from SS units to army engineers. These transfers will take place as soon as possible. Wow, we lose a lot of fuel, a lot of manpower. So be it. <clears throat> Not bad, and I apologize for trying to clear my throat. It is what it is. Wow, that GDP growth, at least it's something. It's better than nothing. Geheim. Activity in Pomer Pomerania. PGD1. Activity has died down throughout most of northern Germany, but activity in Pommern has intensified drastically. Our forces in Gau Pommern face constant harassment, ambushes, and raids. S supply convoys consistently fail to reach their destinations, patrols fail to report in, and reconnaissance elements frequently go missing themselves. On the few occasions when our forces have brought to the division to open battle, the outcome has proven no better. Despite being cut off from major sources of supply, they've cemented or supp supplemented the reserves by pillaging our own supplies and being as conservative as possible. The result of open battle tends to be that our units suffer heavy casualties on initial contact, then hold position to await reinforcements. While doing so, the division's forces still slip away, making gains at our expense alone. The situation in Palmer has deteriorated to the point where we cannot be certain of the feasibility of continued operations there. Civilian opposition to our authority remains high, in part due to positive public perceptions of the division. Crackdowns did not work as anticipated. The populace believes that they are protected from us by the division, which may not be an incorrect sentiment. Our position in Palmer is therefore extremely precarious. A PGD-1 has rain free reign over the entire Gao and will doubtless make full use of that advantage. Perhaps the North cannot hold. Or just get rid of the civilians. If they, you know, harbor the civilians, then, you know, maybe they must be taught a lesson. And refill their reserves. Our true motive. After transporting supplies and men alike, communication with the Oldenstraat has abruptly halted. Reichsführer Himmler and his subordinates have remained silent for over a week, depriving the Reich's ministry for, of for foreign affairs of any form of contact. Not a single letter or phone call has come through to us, and we have received no further orders. Silence heralds one of only two things, the end or the beginning. Hedrich success suspects something drastic is underway, but all we can do is wait. Scout's honor. It is my sincere wish to serve God in Poland with oh, the whole of my life, to give my willing help to other people, and to obey the guide and the scout law. Kazimierz Piotrowski, Piotrowski listened as a German pledged the Scoutish or the Polish scout oath. The DPSG had no oath of their own, so did, so the German members of the network had defaulted to using the Polish one as their code word before meetings. Kazimierz nodded, satisfied with his recitation. Speak freely, friend. The German was a younger man and. Casimirs silently reflected on the bravery of his parents to raise such a young rebel. It was one thing to risk your life for people that were not your own, but to raise a child willing to do so in the midst of such so much Nazi hatred in the schools and streets was remarkable. The young German, clearly somewhat frazzled, began to speak. Hell, with the victory of Heydrich, many things have changed in Germany. The German Civil War has robbed the SS of the ability to remain or retain control over the overstretched Reich, including Danzig. I think that, with proper preparations, we can make a move. Sir, he spoke nervously as if he was a bit frightened he would be reprimanded. Casimir's mind immediately began to race. He had friends in the Polish resistance, people he had known from his youth, and a few he had seen in the camps. He could contact them for aid. They had risen up while Germany was distracted. Was it so wild, he thought, so impossible for his own networks to do the same? As Casimir's began to plot and plan his next move, the young German gave the scout salute. 
Casimir is already hardening his heart for trials ahead. Return it with a smile. You have done well. When all of Europe is free, I will see a medal on you, friend. The two parted ways, each returning to his home and family a little bit brighter than than when when he than he was when he had left it. Wow, that was very awkward. A uh, scout is brave. A little bit brighter than he was. Yeah, that, that's not very... That's very, very clunky. Very, very clunky semantics. Or grammar, I should say. Whatever. Cool. Black... Oh. Black market order failed. Oh, so that's okay. If you want to read about the go right ahead. That's... That was before... Okay, so when we won the Civil War, it made us up into... Or put us into observer mode. So it probably made some sort of black market order then. So, whatever. The demands begin. Oh. Hadrus has been a former top motive. So, Germania was a, a city ever-changing, Hadrus thought. He stood in one of the thousand streets in the world's greatest city and stared into the cold stone face of Hans Speidel. The statue had been torn down less than 20 minutes prior, one of the exactly 47 monuments torn down in the city that day when one of his men came running in through the still-settling dust, carefully maneuvering his way through several of his commanders before giving his Fuhrer, his new Fuhrer, a sharp salute. My Fuhrer, he started. I tried holding them off, but they wouldn't listen. I, <clears throat> the man, struggled to swallow. His discipline seeming to fail under... Hadrian's emotional, sir. The Burgundian men, sir, they're just landed at the Reichstag, sent on Himmler's orders to see you. We did not know. Hadrian stared at him for a few moments uh, before raising his eyes to the rooftops, passing or past the milling SS men and the smoke of the rooftops and towards a towering Volkshalle a few miles away. And without a word, he began to walk towards it. Does good news come on eastern winds? Top secret. The holes in the Volkshalle dome still gaped wide from the battle with Spido's traitors. The recovery crew still having never been given the order to patch them or tear the entire structure down, and instead leaving the building looking like its great dome was poised to collapse at any moment. Temporary landing pads have been erected in the Grosse Platz, in order to ferry in construction material for the various projects around the city center, and this is where the Burgundians had landed. Already they had sanctioned off half the plaza space enough for exactly four helicopters to safely land, if need be, themselves, and it's a single vehicle. And stood it, in front of it stood Werner Grotmann, still as a statue in a perfect SS uniform. Hadrich could smell toad as he approached, but said nothing. Grotman was close to Himmler, and worthy of respect for that, if nothing else. Heil Himmler, Heil mein Führer, Grotman shouted above the helicopter with a proud salute, which Hadrich returned to Kaim. He could immediately tell that Grotman had, was searching for a reaction to the order of names, but if he wanted one, then he'd have been disappointed. Hadrich was above the petty politics and ambitions of junior officers. Grotman folded his hands behind his back and looked to the right stack. I could, I come to offer my congratulations, mein Führer. Heil Himmler has decided that you are to be... <clears throat> Informed of several things, he said, as an aide handed him a sealed red folder. Welcome to the inner circle. Hadrich nodded and reached for the folder, but frowned as Grotman shook his head and hid it behind his back. I have been instructed to observe you while you read the plans and to <clears throat> assist you in the next few days. A private place for a red letter. Top secret. While the folder contained well over 100 pages, and while Grotman's suitcase apparently held hundreds more. The most important part of the plans could have been summarized in a single sentence and in a show of German professionalism, and the cold heart of the SS it actually was profound, proudly typed out on the first page after one push aside the top secret stamped cover. For the betterment of the Aryan race, for the future of the Reich, for the future and victory of the Obermensch over the degenerates, action must be taken to ensure that failures of the past cannot, be pre cannot prevent the victories of the future. Hadrius supposed it was as flowery as a way as any to say that Himmler's plan was not was to end the world, basically. Grotman had not said a word after they had sat down in a dimly lit meeting room besides the order for his aide to hand Hadrish his briefcase. Instead, the man just sat and stared at Hadrish's face, blinking exactly seven times every minute besides one where he'd only blinked six in order to see if the puppet Fuhrer reacted with horror or awe. Instead, he got nothing, most likely as he expected. The only noise in the room being the sound of pages shifting under Hadrish's hand. It was, the, it was only broken when Hadrish looked up, the clock striking four p hours past when they had sat down and closed the folder. When do we begin? For a better world. It was seven hours later when Hadrich's day ended. Thirty hours of observing demolition projects, construction projects, rage, negotiations, imprisonments, executions, rallies, musters, formations, planning sessions, and in the endless effing meetings. And after ordering his personal staff out, he was finally alone. He managed to take around fourteen or thirteen steps. Who even cared anymore when he reached or retched on the floor? His good spontaneist dinner stained the carpet as he desperately tried to keep his breath, squeezing watering eyes shut as his throat burned from the acid. He was careful not to make too much noise, even as he vomited, and especially as he stared at the mess on the floor. God forbid a maid's loose tongue land him against a wall, while Grotman shouts, Fire! <clears throat> when he finished, towelling up the carpet and cleaning his uniform, he walked to the closest window and stared out from just behind the curtain. To watch the helicopters fly in and out with their supplies, he forced his breath even, breathing even, forcing himself to think, and that analytically. He solved problems. It's what they did. It's what they had always done. When he had been nearly homeless so many decades ago. When he had been asked to help find a solution to Europe's degenerate problem. 
When he'd been ordered to arrest his Fuhrer in the 50s, he found his way through things. It's what he did, gosh darn it. But how was he going to ever stop Himmler? How would he save the world to generate an off? A time of action. The demands begin. The orders are coming in. And there's no question of the natural conclusion it will be. Himmler, with all the resources of Western and Central Europe at his disposal, is committing in all efforts towards his end goal. The complete annihilation and destruction of all non-Aryan, and by extension, the world. For now, we must bid our time until we are ready to act. That means showing complete and absolute loyalty to Himmler. Failing to do so not only dooms us, it dooms the world. We must proceed with caution. Absolutely. And at least we got some manpower. We are training our soldiers, and we are uh, obviously on the border of Poland. Just in case the Poles really try anything. Man, he looks a little worried. But then again, Emil Nid Fieldorf. I'd imagine he'd be looking a little worried since <clears throat> he probably doesn't have a lot of hope that we don't come in for him. So, unbelievable. Hadrish ran his hands through his hair. Massive increases to the nuclear stockpiles. More investments into Burgundy. Most bizarre and costly were the orders to create new bunker complexes throughout the nation. Before his very eyes, the plan was coming to fruition. Himmler was preparing for the beginning of the end. Hadrish stopped pacing and sat down in the otherwise empty office. Time was running out. A loud ding startled Himmler. Or Hadrish, I should say. The clock in his office had just struck 11. He looked to the clock and then to the order of his hand. There was much work to be done. One hour from 12. Ominous. We must begin work on bunker construction and building up our nuclear stockpile or there may be dire consequences. Ah, uh, 0% nuclear arsenal. So, very good. We have a, a year remaining to ensure that construction or consequences may prove fatal. Quality of the bunkers are ac currently acceptable. We have a, a little less than two years to ensure its construction of nuclear stockpiles. Hmm. I'm going to go maximize our, our arsenal first. We've already possessed enough nuclear weapons to destroy civilization, but we cannot yet to be certain that the lesser races would be completely annihilated by such an event. A truly apocalyptic stockpile of missiles and bombs needs to be accumulated to permanently eliminate all potential threats towards our descendants. Yeah. I apologize for my pronunciations. They're very poor in this episode so far. Very, very poor of me. But I'm building a lot of civilian factories, so there's that. Hmm. Yeah, I keep coming here. I want less deficits, but yeah, military spending is kind of high. I mean, it, we are German, so what do you expect? Panzer divisions, not bad. Infantry, yeah, whatever. Panzers, oh, that's exactly the same. Uh, it's 18 combat width. Yeah, pretty much exactly the same, so we don't need to see that. Boffin SS. Ooh, Mountaineers. You can probably get rid of that one. That's Potsdam's vice. Sitting alone in his office late at night, Hadrish cursed himself for opening the liquor bottle. It was a foolish endeavor, and dangerous as well. If the German people were to learn of his betrayal of Spotsonism, they would surely doubt the convictions of the, their Fuhrer. If Himmler knew, he would tell that Hadrish's heart was already set against him, and any hope of stopping his demented schemes would be dashed. And yet, Himmler remained away in Ost Paris, furthering his own directives in pursuit of his grand plan. How long would he notice Hadrish's loyalty begin to wane? Or until then? How long could the facade be kept up? A year, perhaps, before Himmler's expectations did not match reality, Hadrian thought. He glanced disgustingly at the bottle of wine, which was almost empty. Perhaps two years, if he kept his base impulses in check. Nevertheless, he refilled his glass. Who could he trust to aid him? That was a difficult question, indeed. Himmler's plans were insane, yes, but Himmler's men were loyal to a fault. They had been chosen not for skill, but because they believed in Himmler's vision. Hadrian had believed in that vision once as well, until Grotman had shown him the horror of it all. Now he was just not certain. He would tell a member of his inner circle first to be certain that these thoughts were not unique to him. It would have to be Buhler, de Alquin, Scheler, or Giel. He did not trust that others would not run to Himmler, but which of the four was most likely to see the truth and need and the need to act upon it? He sought at once of Buhler. He committed National Socialist, as devoted, devoted to the New World Order as any man Hadrish had ever known, but Hadrish knew that Buhler had served on the Commission of National Socialist Literature for a long time. Furthermore, he knew that it brought Buhler joy to collect all sorts of books, pursuing knowledge wherever he could find it. With all the undiscovered writings scattered across the world, Hadrish could not see the men ever consenting to see it all destroyed, not even if it secured the Reich 1,000 more years. Give me Buhler now. Shut down the plants. <clears throat> The Reich's nuclear power plants will be destroyed like any other buildings once the missiles begin to rain down upon Germany. With only a little more time left before the plan is set in motion, our priorities are all clear. All physical materials must be stripped from these wasteful projects and employed more sensibly. While I'm busy just kind of looking at divisions. Hmm. This is not bad. I prefer... How much artillery do we have? Do we have enough artillery? Well, actually, is it up here? Ah, yeah, it's right here. Saves man manpower. That'd be good. These divisions. Good hospital three is very good. And we have some options. We have a lot of political power too, so that's good. Uh, actually, give me all you guys. Give me all you guys. We still have the penal brigade, so. Nice. 
double research. And it is 65. Hope you're all having a great year. It'll be okay for us, hopefully. We're done with that stuff. Let's see anything over here. No, we do not. I'd love to get some helicopters, but... Mm, yeah, might as well get some scout helis. We can. Eh, whatever. Doesn't really matter. What do we have over here? Ah, we have all this political power. Nuclear stockpile. So, from my understanding of this, we need to have as much of a nuclear stockpile as possible. Like, that'll help push our strength up compared to Burgundy's, so... Bunkers, arsenal. Let's see, this is a lot. Production will proceed more efficiently after completion. Let's see. Will increase significantly at the cost of quality. Himmler will not be pleased. Slave participation. Well, let's see. Slightly. Will increase significantly. I'm going to go and do this one. Yeah, let's do that one. I think that's probably for the best. And we still have our tanks and motorized over here, so these guys were pretty good. Any upgrades? No. I don't think we're going to have too too much more warfare here, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah, let's grab that. Nice. Let's grab that. Cool. Sharing the button. We're sharing the load. Builder. Carefully examine the report, taking a great deal of time to read through it. More than once, Hadrius caught him rereading a particular page. The Fuhrer's hand remained pressed against a cr handle of the desk drawer, where he had stowed a pistol safe... Safe, safely away before arranging the meeting. If Buller betrayed him, or Buller proved unable to do what was required of him, he would need to be disposed of immediately. Already he was beginning to see what he thought might be signs of distress on Buller's face. If he even gave a hint of a reaction, then it was a mistake to have trusted him. Adrius just sought to gain return to the pistol. Anyone could ruin it all with a single word or glance out of place. Stopping the pain, or plan, had to come first, and if Buller proved to be a hindrance, Adrius had brought the weapon for a reason. Seemingly finished reading, Buller looked up at Adrius, his eyes widened and his brow creased in worry and confusion. My fear. My fear? Mine fear? What is this document? He looked at Hadrish, as if desperate to be assured it was all a liar joke. Hadris was on his feet in an instant. Shut your mouth, he hissed, leaning over the bespeckled man with a look of utter loathing in his eyes. If Himmler catches even a hint of this, we will both be dead men, with no chance at stopping this. That is, if you, if I do not have you shot first for such incompetence, this changes nothing for you. You will act, speak, and think as you normally do, until such a time as your Fuhrer gives you the orders to do so. Is that clear? Bueller looked, took a moment to compose himself before nodding. Yes, my Fuhrer. <clears throat> Hedrus could see in his eyes that he was still in a state of panic. But at the very least, he was exercising some amount of self-restraint. You are dismissed. We will talk more of this when you have regained your wits. Hedrus returned to his seat, watching his Buller exited. A blank expression on his face. Hedrus glanced at the drawer, unopened, and felt a pang of disgust with himself. He'd grown weak. Hmm. Weakness. So, exploit the Rex Commissariats. Any receptive Rex Commissariats in search of resources or foreign sources. Himmler will not be pleased. Pick them dry. Breton back channels. We swear to provide us with resources as soon as possible, unless they suffer the consequences. So let's see, do we have any happy Rex Commissariats? Well, let's see. <laughs> Moscow autonomy, so uh, probably not too much. The German sovereign zone, not bad. We do have the Ukraine here, and Caucasus. Oh, under Mr. Scar, dude here. Central European Council. Ooh, I'm not really sure what you want to do. Exploit. Well, we have the Ukraine, and we might want to build a place in what some might call uh, North Ukraine. I can't even remember the name. So, now look how happy this guy is. He's so happy. Pick them dry. We could piss off Himmler. I don't want to piss him off too much, though, so let's exploit their ex commissariats. Our SS brothers throughout the Greater Reich occupy lands that may possess useful materials, particularly uranium. If that is the case, if Fuhrer demands that any such materials be immediately surrendered to his control in the name of the Aryan race. Born successes. You know what? Is there a penalty for pissing off Himmler too much? Um. You know, I think I will do foreign success. Or foreign sources. Just because that seems like there's a greater chance of securing stuff like that way. Nukes are nukes. It matters not from whence they are sourced. Rocket parts and fuel made elsewhere in the world will serve us just as well as those made ourselves. So we'll look into the possibility of mass importation, legal or otherwise. Now, that might piss off, like, other nations. Like, wait, whoa. Why is Germany trying to get more material here? So, but still, hey, you never know. Democracy returns to Italy. What a bunch of degenerates. Actually, how's this looking down here? Going to Krim. Good old donuts, eh? Actually, do we have an attack? Nope. 
foreign sources, Breton back channels. Normally, there's no limit to Breton unscrupulousness. Normally, such a trait would be undesirable, but for now, it serves our purposes. They will not ask questions about our request for nuclear material. At least, not if they know what's good for them. Informing the others. Boothard and gathered the others in de Alquin's office, where expected few people would be lurking about. Any meeting in Hadrius' office risks an eavesdropping guard or some self-important official storming into a demand a meeting with a Fuhrer. Himmler's dogs were becoming ever bolder, even as Hadrius subtly worked against them at every turn. Thankfully, Himmler was still unaware. Himmler has finally lost his mind, Scheler proclaimed, looking up from Himmler's plan. Hadrius scowled. It has been the least ideological of them, but the Fuhrer had expected a bit more tact. De Alquin looked utterly shaken as well, though he kept his mouth shut. Amongst his ministers, only Gil fully maintained his composure, looking calmly to Hadrius for his next orders. Gentlemen, Buller turned to the men who had just, whether they knew it or not, joined the small cabal of Germans still willing to resist Himmler. He spoke with the same cadence that the generals had used before Operation Barbarossa. Your fear needs your help against those who would see the Aryan race rendered decadent. This is a matter that requires the utmost secrecy from each of you. The survival of the Reich will depend on it. Hadrius folded his hands atop the desk. You should all be aware of what needs to be done if we want to uphold the truth of National Socialism. With a nod from the sphere, Miller began to hand each of his fellows an envelope. Hadrius kept speaking. You will find your instructions printed here. Follow them to the T letter. Or follow them to a T. If you have a question, read them again and then set them alight when finished. Each man nodded, setting out to accomplish the tasks given. As Buller waited for his own instructions, Hadrius felt something he had not felt in a long time. Hadrius felt in control. Keep uh, so a couple comments. We haven't got to talk about them. Someone said that there's like elections after the English Civil War where we can help support like other people. Well, they've already gotten libertarian socialists, which is not very good for us. So, yeah. There's not really much we can do about that. If I was goring, if we were goring here, then, um, yeah, we could actually like probably get involved and take them out. But obviously we're not, so we'll see what happens. Quality of our bunkers are quite good. Pakistan becomes independent. I don't really care about them. Cool. And actually, after this one, we should probably go ahead and do SS Bunkers. The course of our race is said the world must burn so that the shoots of the pure race can sprout from the ashes. However, we cannot simply launch our nuclear weapons and hope for the best, no matter the strength of our blood. The Aryans require their own Gimli, where they might weather the firestorm that cleanses the world. Reichsfuhrer Himmler has selected the Alps as the most suitable location to construct the bunkers that will deliver us to salvation. Work must begin immediately. The less time we must spend in this benign world, the better. The armies of the Reich. Hadrius hoped that Gilles' trust in these men was not misplaced. He felt uneasy around them. The SS military, of course, were men he knew very well. Hadrius even respected some of them. Gilles, or Gilles' context and the Heer, however, seemed to make a mockery of National Socialism and especially Spartanism. Almost all were fat and not one had been so bold as to offer Hadrius a cigarette. Gil and Buller were doing the most of the talking, something that the Fuhrer was thankful for. They spoke at length about how Himmler planned to bring ruin to the Reich, and how Hadrius needed their help to save National Socialism. They did not mention anything about Himmler's true plan at Hadrius's request. These men did not seem to require that, that knowledge to be convinced. They were trying to work with the traitors. These were not men who had seen the manas hiding behind Himmler's veneer of brilliance, but men who had seemed to be willing to reject the brilliance at face value. These men did not care for anything that was right in the world, but just for what benefited themselves, just like Goring. How could he justify working with them, even for the survival of the world? Hadrius was lost deep in thought about this, having lost track of the long-winded conversation. His head elsewhere, his head, he <clears throat> his head elsewhere, he absentmindedly set his hand against his leg. A short pain burned into him, and the Fuhrer winced. Bula looked back frantic. My Fuhrer, are you alright? Hadrius dismissed him with a wave and an annoyed glare that only had served to draw attention to it. <clears throat> As Gile and Bula resumed their pleas, Hadrius stared at the now crushed cigarette in his hand, and Smark still throbbed against his leg. He accepted it without a thought when a year ago he would have instantly thrown it to the ground and ordered these officers shot. Who was Hadrius to doubt the integrity of others when he had been rejecting the Spartan way for weeks? Across the room, Gil came to a deal. <clears throat> He's <sighs> pretty good for political power. Shaler? Not very good for, for political power, oh god. And Alkin? Not bad. So, the Berserker insurgency. While the pacification of Germania was complete, the SS units had spread across the country to ensure peace and order from outside the capital's will. Holdouts have persisted both above and underground. To prove themselves a nuisance at every possible term, one such nuisance was rapidly found in the Berserkers. While Germany's first and greatest special forces units had participated in the defense of Germania, they had managed to slip out of the SS's grasp during the final assault into the city. <clears throat> While most of the SS had initially hoped them dead, combat ineffective, scattered reports from northern Germany ahead for weeks signaled the opposite. Highly coordinated and precise strikes against SS forces, missing or destroyed supplies, bridges and highways being found in the ruins left and right for weeks. SS anti-partisan forces across the whole of Pomerania, Pomerania had suffered setbacks after setback, and following weeks of humiliating defeat, SS forces began to retreat as if running from the devil himself. Already, much of the northern coast has been turned over to the insurgents and will doubtlessly be a blood, bloody struggle to, to attempt to dislodge them. 
gosh darn renegades. <sighs> we do what we must. Uh, Rush Duck Stripe. I'm gonna put you guys right here. Give them a few days and we'll have them done. A few hours, really, to get up there. Can you hear the people sing? Sing! The rifle fell, fell silent and Kazimierz Pichowski's hands for the first time in years, perhaps even his entire life. The world has taken so much of a toll on him, and that he had long since forgotten true joy like this. Even if desperation and dread muddied its foundation, the spent shell casing lying next to his feet and the trail of blood on the wall behind him that accompanied the slumped body of a dead German soldier was a clear sign as any that a rebellion had begun, and not only had begun, but grown and thrived. <clears throat> the cheer of thousands awaited him behind, uh, my apologies, uh, awaited him beyond the set of shot-out double doors in front of him that led out onto a stone balcony. Whether he... Pichowski raised himself from the chair and triumphantly opened to a light wind of Königsberg hitting against his body and the frenzied cry of liberation ringing throughout his ears as he looked across the countless there to listen to him speak. The smallest of smiles and ill-afforded luxury came across Pichowski's face. Remember, my friends, my brothers and sisters, he began putting one free hand on the grainy stone surface in front of him while the others held a death grip on this weapon. Today's the day we mark the first victory of the free people. Free from the maniacal grip of the Reich. Free from the monstrous SS. Free from our oppressors. Here, destiny's chains have been broken and it rains or falls into our hands to guide it towards the flickering, flickering light that may give us salvation. The next breath he took felt ragged and liquid pooled at the corners of his eyes. It had been a long time since he felt so happy and afraid at the same time. As a thousand more voices screamed in agony, in terrified fright, and hope, and the most doubtless hint of optimism that finally began to bloom, Pichowski's <clears throat> raised his rifle high in the air, and a hundred guns followed. Freedom come today, and it shall stay with us forever? I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's go and prepare ourselves, just in case. Get some organization, and actually, if they're going, to, going around Königsberg, I'm going to put some soldiers, like, here-ish. I'll keep you guys around Poland, but... How long do we have for these guys? We've got a couple days, that's fine. Alright. Uh, worms. So be it. I've not seen this in a while. Those are some huge classes. Uh, look, Vegana. Ah, Vegana. Back to the sea. First and foremost. They have probably no divisions, but they'll probably spawn with some in just a little bit. Oh, uh, SS bunkers, cool. To exact specifications. Um, conscript the DLR. You know, I'm going to grab that one just in case if we need it. While Germany stagnated, Rotsfeuer Himmler was planning for the future of the Aryan race. The blueprints for our survival are already complete. All that remains is to realize them in concrete and steel. To deviate from them in any matter would be to take an unacceptable risk, according to the esteemed Rotsfeuer. Alright, so we've got the bunkers. We're going to work on both at the same time. More efficiently, after completion. That's fine, we've got enough political power. Cool. And, how much longer do we have for this? Eight days, that's fine. Words spoken in secret. The Reichsfeuer had not moved for some time. Troubles ran deep in his mind, spurring the fangs of doubt to, at, to gnaw at once concrete uncertainty. Or certainty. Hadrich, now Fjord of the Reich, was not amiable as he used to be. The distance between them had widened to become a large, largely professional relationship a decade prior, but even by that measure, Hadrich was still unusually distant. Himmler tapped an idle finger against the diary resting in his lap, unopened and blank for the first time in years. Perhaps it was a mere humility, humanity weighing Hadrich down. The duty of great men was always burdensome, doubtless, doubly so, when it violated all moral norms. Setting those obstacles aside was a sacrifice they had both chosen to make in order to solve the Jewish question and know that no future generations of Aryans would be oppressed or have vengeance visited upon them. The new plan, the final solution for all the world's evils, was no different. So, where was Hadrich's iron resolve? Where was the quiet zeal that had guided him at Vannes, Vansi? Victory had been achieved over decadent national socialism. The new Führer's failings were forgiven, and now they could fulfill the divine destiny of their race. Once the bunkers were complete and a large enough nuclear arsenal assembled, the future would be assured forever. No more Jews, Slavs, sadness, anger, or envy. <clears throat> was Hadrian stalling for something? He couldn't possibly be. Himmler tapped his finger. Tapping finger froze. The thought was unbidden. Absurd. Even with the Führer's previous recalcitrance, was it possible? The master of Burgundy reached for his black telephone with a hand turned cold and clammy. Just for some simple questions, that was all. Inquiries to answer so that he might sleep soundly. None of them full Hadrish. Oh, okay, research too. Good. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna get better artillery, but we can't do that. How's this looking? Oh, we didn't do shock and all yet. Cool. Cool. 
So, hey, we're trying to build up stuff. Oh, oh, look at this. The dam damnable soldiers. The pitiful slaves. Spartacus. Oh, Spartacus. Yeah, this is interesting. So, wait. We can't do the other one? So, just leave the slaves alone for now. They are not worth our time. No one in, no one out. Um, we declare war on them. Dispatch SS units immediately. Cost of their actions. Slaves are slaves, I and mean, we will put them down anyways, so. Of every any leverage. Seal up the exits and kick the front door. If anything, I, I'm pretty sure that our, our military supervision law with civilian casualties encouraged, huh? Yeah, I mean, we'll pull down slaves anyways, but anyone who re who's a traitor to us can't survive. So, Panzer Grenado Division Berserker. Supposedly the finest division in the hail has risen up against the rifle fear. Unsurprisingly, it's given the, their allegiance to the traitor Spidal, but not particularly concerning either. Like the comrades, they are feeble and degenerate, so no match for the men of the SS. They will die as easily as any others. Do these guys have focus trees? No. And you guys, Ostpreisen. How dare they take Ostpreisen? Liberal democracy, but... Hmm. To the death. Drawing... Oh, wow. That's a lot, that's a lot of defense. Just as... Justice of the Liberated. Wow. And old soldiers. So, the map of Germany was all wrong. Not since the 30s years war had been so divided. Hadrian's knew it was mere fact that made manifest. Not a literal breakdown of the Reich, but still, so wrong. Lines have been drawn in the black ink around natural borders and edges of the Gauss, delineating the zones of control where a unified state had once stood. Names were scrawled on the paper in bright red. Arisha Volksfront. Alsace Autoschat Lothringen. Lieferstandard Heinrich Himmler. Messy scrollings marked where the map had been updated in a hurry as the situation deteriorated. Per capital... He possessed the shard carcass of a half-finished city and a patch of land short on industry and agriculture alike. The rest of his rifle territory was split and scattered and entered the zone here. Some garrisons, a few gauss still linked up, but it was gradually failing away, or falling away. SS Wehrmacht remnants, dissident groups, and even slaves had all staked their claims before he could even blink. Even the SS, by, by law, his army alone, was engaged in mass mutiny and separatism. Months spent fighting a horrendously destructive war against a degeneracy. Millions dead, the high mountain ruins. History looked as though it might repeat after five gosh darn minutes. Got a hilt. So... Uh, someone also recommends, as a comment, I should play in Africa. Oh, are you kidding me? Seriously? This is so dumb. A second c civil war? You're not Himmler. They will fight to the last to protect the Reich sphere. SS. Westfalen? Like, what is... Scorzi? Uh, uh, Scorzi is still here? God dang, we can't deal with the Poles in right now then. So be it. And. Harsha Volksfront. Heinlein? Henlein. 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 Well, that is. I kind of don't like this, but whatever. Oh, who's in here in Essen? Oh, the best fallen. Fine, we won't deal with the Poles for now. Oh, did they rise up here too? Oh, my goodness. Freistadt Preussen. Eichmann. Eichmann still is. is he's alive? Maybe that's a different Eichmann I'm thinking of. Holy crap. Uh, let's see. What are we going to do? 60s. Signal companies. That's good, that one. Yep, there's not really much we can do about that, so... Hopefully, these guys will fall pretty quickly. The gosh darn soldiers. No one in, but no one out. The Einz, the Bezeka Division, has taken refuge in Pomerania. Pomerania? Pomerania. This works to our advantage. Despite the unfavorable terrain, they are hemmed in by rivers and the coast. Once the borders of Grau Palmer are locked down, not one trader shall escape to spread their lives and sedition again. A day in Germania. To the average German citizen still living in Germania. The day was like any other. They woke up. They began going to work. They kept their heads down to avoid the ire of the SS men on the street's corners, and then it was chaos. It started with the closure of the Sudbahnhof and Tempelhof Schönenberg. As... Train stations across the city were suddenly closed without warning from soldiers belonging to the Burgundian SS. Civilians forced to, instead, begin their daily commute on foot, were then instructed into their homes at roadblocks along the Prashtali, where many would have caught glimpses of armored vehicles speeding down the parade grounds towards the Reichstag. For the soldiers at the Capitol building, the hand-selected men of Hadrich who had been expecting the attack, or an attack, was nothing but an inv inevitability, and they were clearly more than ready. Watching from the windows, witnesses could have been able to see the first vehicle on the convoy explode as a copper rocket launched from the upper windows of the Reichstag met its mark. A second one soon impacted the last vehicle in the convoy, and as the soldiers in the back attempted to evacuate their vehicles, were immediately met with heavy, overlapping machine gun fire. <clears throat> as SS units around the Reichstag began firing at SS units inside of it, the noise of gunfire and explosions could be heard across the city, much like it had only begun a few months prior. To those loyal to Heinrich Himmler in the city, it soon became clear that this was not an average day, and this was not a successful coup. 
Hadris had seen them coming, and the counter-coup had begun. Today it marks and begins a real war. It's picking up the scraps, though, now. Germania was a war zone yet again, and the fate of the nation was in the air. Traditionally in battle, lines would be eventually drawn, and the fighting would become static, besides pockets of rapid movement that eventually allowed for a grandeur strategy to resume. That was not this battle. There was no battle lines, the SS fought itself. Those loyal to Hadrish had already moved their armed bands to the opposite arm to differentiate themselves, but in the hectic environment of the battlefield, that was often lost. Friendly fire was as common as enemy fire, and both sides often seemed confused over what exactly they were fighting over. One thing was for sure enough that one side had been ordered to eliminate Hadrish, and the other would not allow it. In the midst of the battle, two separate detachments of Burgundians broke off and began rapid deployment to two separate locations. One of them was an armory filled to the brim with weaponry recovered from the battle as Spadel's forces, which would be from indispensable to Hadrich's forces. And the other detachment moved with all haste to Spandau, while Hans Spadel and his general staff had been in prison, with orders to immediately liquidate anyone inside. Nearby both units, one Hauptsturmführer, Victor Sommer, began demanding orders of which location to save. His unit was the only one close enough to stop them. Save the prison? Oh wait, save the prison? Picking up the scraps. Hmm. Burgundians. Demanding orders of which location to save. Save the prison. Get to the armory. It doesn't really matter if... It sounds like we're helping Himmler here. Save the prison? No, we want to destroy the prison. We'll just go to the prison anyways, who cares? The Battle of Spandau. Hobstrom, Solma, and his men were rapid in movement and merciless in the attack. Requisitioning a civilian truck, his squadron managed to ram their leading SS vehicle and his men quickly enveloped the SS force. While they were being backed by the larger SS force, they retreated in good order to Spandau, where him and his men used the castle's fortifications to fend out the SS counterattack. Eventually, the SS forces managed to extradite, uh, extricate several armored vehicles from the ambush site and ran the gates of Spandau, and in certain the battle in the prison, Sommer made the decision to arm Hans Spado and his imprisoned staff, and with the extra numbers they matched the repulse of Burgundians and annihilate the remaining at remains of the attacking force. <clears throat> While Sommer and his men initially celebrated, so they were soon interrupted by the sound of the explosions ripping across the city from several blocks away, shattering windows for miles. The army was gone. So when can we fight them? Oh, budget boosts? Yeah, at this point we're just going to keep investing. And at this point we're probably going to do this one. SS Civil War. Approximately 16 hours after the citizens of Germania were first turned away from their trains one early morning in Germania, the streets once more fell silent. <clears throat> the citizen in the outskirts looked out at a window. They had been able to see armored vehicles, trucks, and civilian cars all pouring out of the city, and all filled with men in SS uniforms. After hectic fighting across several of the most important parts of Germania, forces loyal to Führer Heydrich eventually managed to carry the day and those forces loyal to Himmler out of the city. An uneasy, an uneasy peace had settled for now as Heydrich's men had begun closing off all exits from the city in an attempt to catch any remaining fleeing Burgundians. On a small street, in the outskirts, Hadrish watched clouds pass over the moon and attempted to ignore the shouting behind him. How dare you, Grotman shouted as he was dragged out of the basement of a small stall, while several of his men began cornered and killing minutes ago. And killed minutes ago, their blood still warm around Hadrish's boot soles. He's going to have you killed, Hadrish, you madman. Once you're dead, you'll, he'll have me killed too for not seeing this sooner. You're doomed. You've doomed both of us. Hadrish stood still, staring at the clouds playing out of the scenarios in his mind. After some time, he nodded. Yes, I have, he said, and swiped his neck with a finger. A moment later, and a gunshot precedented, preceded the thumping noise of Grotman hitting the ground. There was so much to do now. Where would he begin? May the strong survive. Now we shall see the fatherland for what it truly is. Let the battle begin. There we go. I was not expecting a second German civil war, but... C'est la vie. Oh, crap. Missile control. Germany is in control of 22.2% of the missile stockpiles. Bergen is in control of the same amount. 55.5% of the missile stockpiles are currently uncontrolled. The civil war can be opened from the politics tab. Oh my goodness, what do we do here? Now, there was a comment from saying saying from yesterday that we should... Anti-German. The children of Spartacus, obviously. Um, compromise as much as possible. So, oh, here we are. Jesus Christ, this is nuts. What the heck? Oh my gosh! Where do we... Oh my goodness. Well, we're going to focus on them. And then you guys, where can we start? Oh my gosh. It's like, who's who's leading all this stuff? Fegelein! Oh, Fegelein. That's a Burgundian dude. Steiner. Of course. Oh. Galen. Huh. Okay. Well, I, I was not expecting this. Yeah, I don't think you're Himmler, man. You're Monk. Aika? Raymer. Raymer? Hmm. Hmm. Donuts is back. I still like his glasses. I still like them. Anything else? 
Gila. Oh, wait, so Gila's over there. Did he rebel against us, or black, white, and red? Shell of a breadbasket. Huh. Bar Barbie? Barbie. Tell us Barbie, eh? Jesus Christ, there's so many different ones. Um, cool. But let's go ahead and do this and see what happens. Oh. Oh, the focus tree completely changed. All eyes on Hadrish. Allies abroad. Careful balance of this. Jesus Christ. Well, do, I guess we'll do this one, maybe. So, as Führer, the Reich now looks to Heydrich to lead it through the unprecedented crisis. It was Hitler's will that the greatest creation endured and endured shall. The challenge will be our greatest yet. De facto, Greater Germany is riven by strife and carved up into petty fiefdoms with the Führer's authority existing in name only. Heydrich must also begin to assert himself immediately, but only with great care. The political situation is delicate and we cannot be certain of any man's loyalty at this point. There will be sacrifices, for not every interest can be satisfied, but for whatever move we can make must be for the greater good. And I'll be right back. Alright everyone, and we have a dream destroyed yet again. With the moon hanging high over Germania, Hadrish found himself in the command center staring down at the butchered map of the Reich laid out on the operations desk. It was rucking to be complete now, but that didn't make it any more pleasant to behold. What would Hitler have said of the situation for a moment? Hadrish entertained himself with an image of the Fuhrer in his prime. Germany, motherland of all, Saul, beset by treason. He would have bellowed, yet our flame remains undiminished. The fire of the great Germanic race, those inheritors of Alexander, Caesar, and Charlemagne. It cannot be extinguished by the encroaching darkness, no matter how many brave souls perish in its defense. The image faded, however, as reality crept back in. Hitler was long dead, that incarnation of him even more so. Germany's paragon had aged so rapidly after the attempted SS coup that it shocked even Hadrish physically. He'd never been impressive, nor even Aryan-looking, but he had sparked the fire of National Socialism and led his people to greatness. How could he have anything but Aryan? Or been anything but Aryan? Yet Hadrish had to admit it, it was a disquieting thought. Was that how he would end up his days too? Withered and fragile, without even the strength to raise his own arm and salute? But he thought of another Hitler then, then. One who never came to be, but certainly could have. Hitler screaming in undignified frustration, castigating his generals for the failure as the British, French, and Bolsheviks closed on Berlin. Hadrish thought of the old man's fury turning upon him, demanding to know why he, the perfect Aryan, had failed, while the servants of Jewry and Bolshevism waxed strong over Germany's ruins. Hadrish pushed the thought from his mind, but he knew it would return time and time again. Dark thoughts heavier than, than even leaden muscles. Friends close? I think what we might want to do here is... I'm not really sure, actually, but empower the SS more. Because I see the Pretenders over here. I don't like the Pretenders too much, honestly. I think it was just probably would get rid of those guys. So, moderate moderate factional opinion? Maybe? I don't know. It just Let's do Friends Close. No longer united as they once were, the SS is now just another assemblage, assemblage of personalities which the Fuhrer must contend with. Our old comrades in arms run the gamut of true-blooded Aryan ideologues to grizzled soldiers who barely pay lip service to the Reich's ideals. Hadrish may not be the commanding officer anymore, but Himmler is merely a Reichsfeer of Burgundy. His influence must be confirmed or confined to its allocated domain until the time is right to strip it from it entirely. We should see how the true, the true, how true the honor of the SS is. Idealist factions will be slightly more effective. Friends and family. Rogue elements, man. I just want to go to war. To be honest with you, but that's okay. That's okay. Two, two, point two, five. Hmm. So what we need is control by Burgundy. Friends close. By Burgundy. Himmler leading 20. Osterreich. I guess we gotta get Otto. Nuremberg. Or Kaltenbrunner. As well as Klingenberg. And Berserker. And these guys. So, because we're not obviously gonna be, probably get this one. I mean, we have our own. So, oh wait, no, I want. Yeah, this is our own. Transfer the missile stockpile in the state into another allied state? Huh. I don't know you can move stuff. It's kinda cool. So we need to get these guys. Oh, and we have we have also down here too, so. Oh. Flish. Neutral state. So we need Königsberg and the three like southern central southern Germany German states like here. Under Steiner. Nuremberg. Of course like I just said. Banda, huh? Directed anarchy. The Volkswagen. Steiner, huh? This is, this is nuts. The Degrel Gambit. Belgian National Order. Loyalty to Hadrish. Sure. Attempting to sway avowed Himmlerites will likely be end 
be a futile endeavor. The Reich Sphere has spent nearly 40 years building up his personal cabal of fanatics. Most are not so discerning as Hadrius and his comrades of the Deutsch SS. It might be preferable to cut our losses and find alter alternate solutions for dealing with the Burgundians. The position of the non Burgundians is strong, at least. Vegelein, Dietrich, Skolzini, and Henlein have all caved out statelets for themselves, repressing, representing the last of the SS truly loyal to Hitler's vision. They are best hope for bolstering our forces, yes. We'll try to get as many nukes as possible. Friends and family, Dawn's gray light was peeking between the curtains by the time Hadrius finished the work that started 12 hours earlier. Arranged haphazardly on the desk was a mountain of documents and photographs collected from the SS archives, comprising every little piece of information accessible to him. Still, he knew it wasn't comprehensive enough. He snubbed out or stubbed out his 18th cigarette of the night and immediately lit another, struggling for a moment with its lighter and most dropping it from trembling fingers. Hadrius had the names Monk, De La Mazière, De La Grelle, Aika. Fagelein, and many more besides. Traitors in many ways, he supposed. Hitler certainly would have approved of his factionalism, would he? He had always played his subordinates against one another, but Himmler had maintained the line that SS was an independent and undivided entity. How long had that been alive for? Since the formation of the Burg Burgund Burgundy or longer? Even then. The splits weren't against the leadership. These small, petty men, vying for power, were just doing what the NSDAP had done always under him Hitler. Power grabs wherever they could be made. Two-faced diplomacy and paranoia, all for the sake of career investment. Darwinism in the, in the political sphere. Despite that, any of them could still be in Himmler's pocket. The Reichsfer had been playing a long game for years, and Hadrian had just months to catch up at most. Every move had to be decisive in order to rip his possible allies cleanly from Burgundy's grasp. Hadrian dropped the stub of a cigarette, not noticing that the ashtray was overflowing again. What became of racial unity? Well, it no longer exists. Yeah, so these three, and then... Yeah, these guys appear. These guys are antagonistic to us. Loyalty to Hadrish. Sons of Sudenton. Uh, an old friend. Fleisch. So Fleisch is a guy we, we might want, right? Is it Fleisch? Steinhoff. Kaltenbrunner. Well, well, maybe Fleisch was down here. No, not you. Oh, who's down here? And who's in this part of Austria? Ah, uh, Fleisch. I mean, Fleisch does like us already, so we don't really do too much with him then. Um, contacts in Burgundy. An old friend. Three armies. Exerting influence in the Waffen SS. Commando Stab Waffen SS. So. Commando Stab. Hmm. Which one's Commando Stab? There's that one. Westfalen, Niederlande, Lothurn. Hmm. This, this is a huge mess. Oof. How about over here? Oh, come on. Oh. He is leaning towards us already, but he has no nukes. I mean, obviously, we need him under lots of the militarists. Sondergericht. Oh, crap. Oh, which one? Uh. The Pretenders. And Deutsches Reich, which is like over here, I think? No. No, these, that guy's already leading for us. Crud. I, I apologize for trying to figure this one out. Spartacus. Um, Burgundy. Wait, which one? Which? Oh, okay, so which one is German right? This is this is just a huge mess. You can't tell which where, who's what where. Is this Deutsche SS? No, Kampfgruppe Fegelein. Oh, this is such. This is a huge mess. I can't figure out which, who's what where. I mean, obviously the, the slaves, Spartacus is in, is in the east, but Deutsches Reich. Why is it so hard to see that? Like that's that's kind of dumb. Re regardless, <sighs> yeah, they got nothing down there. So honestly, I don't feel like allying any of these guys. Armies, allies abroad. Is that, is that good? Maybe let's do three armies at least, because we got yeah, things we got to do down there. So the Waffen SS is a strong right arm of the Führer since 1939. When the gods of war called, it was the legions of the Waffen who were the first to answer, always at the vanguard of Germany's conquests. Most importantly, they are quite uninvolved in politics. Simply put, they never had a time for Himmler's skullduggery. Their mercenary tendencies are concerning, but their values, soldiers, remain undiminished. On swing, the Waffen or the Waffen will hopefully not be difficult at all. Hadrius is well respected among the officers and enlisted men alike. So be it. Oh, fellow traitors in National Socialism. Hadrius is... Oh, come on. I don't care about that stuff. We got a lot of bigger things to deal with. Hadrius' face was impassive, but internally he was more than a little disappointed with his little list he, as he reread it. 
Skolzny, Dietrich, Fegelein, Henlein, and whoever was in charge of the Waffen SS nowadays. Not an impressive coalition of possible loyalists by any means. Kozeny and Dietrich wouldn't be hard to sway. They were true military men with no patience for politics. The latter was behaving very erratically in recent months, but Skolzny was as professional as he came. Though a devoted National Socialist, he probably even worked for the damn Jews if their terms were good enough. Fegelein was a rat, plain and simple. A sniveling, arrogant little rodent who'd only held his position by virtue of marriage into power and sickening, sickening servility. He hid from Himmler behind propaganda and from society's judgment behind his wife's skirts. Pathetic, but the propaganda machine he was operating out of Dresden could be useful. Henlein wasn't likable in, in, in the slightest. He just recalled their very unpleasant disputes back in the 40s, where he purged the Sudetenland NSDAP and got like Henlein, Henlein's staff. Now he's operating some kind of renewed Lebensborn program. program. Uh, reports were flooding in from the Buhler's office of both German and Bohemian women being abducted or conscripted a gun put into rep reproductive facilities, as a bit much, even in the name of the Aryan race. Finally, there was a Waffen SS. Still mercenary in many ways. There had allegedly been some kind of power struggle recently. Gila had asserted that there would be no difficulty reigning them in, but had yet to confirm his success. There, uh, well, that was a little more concerning, but to have such a substantial portion of the Waffen in Himmler's camp would be nothing short, short of disastrous. A fear aside and let down and set down on the list leaning onto his desk to rest his weary head. So much he thought for unquestioned authority. Is this the best we can muster? Apparently. Apparently. We want Hauser's Burgundische SS? Stad Stadler's Waffen SS? Or Gilles Deutsch SS? Too thick and thin. It's not bad. Joins a faction. Um, Heydrich marching to the drum. I'm not sure which one to choose, I'll be honest. I have no idea which one to choose, so... Enemies closer. It was mere months ago that we had to battle the non-SS factions within the right to secure Hadrian to fight rifle rule. Now we find ourselves without friends or allies, and those same enemies who might have once threatened Himmler are dead, broken, or scattered throughout Germany. Some small hope remains at last. At least so. Certain elements of the Wehrmacht and moderate political groups have survived their Burger Krieg and seized territory for themselves. No doubt they intend to try and take advantage of the chaos to overthrow Hadrich. However, these men are realists, and once it becomes obvious that Hadrich is not loyal to Himmler, they will have second thoughts about any existing plans. But times are desperate. Ooh. Oh, what happened here? Oh, reintegrate them? Oh, we need more loyalty so we can integrate them. That's not bad. Oh, what happened here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Is it over here? No, it was over here. Oh, it's over here. Contacts in Burgundy. Cool. SS Division Charlemagne. Heirs of Francia. SS Division Langmark. Okay, that's kind of cool. But Death's Hand? Oh. Just like old times. A page from Leopold's book. We go to we can go to war with Freistadt Preussen. Freistadt Preussen. It's all wow, that's all we don't even have access over there. But anyways, but times are desperate. The commando staff were secure in friendly hands. The Deutsche SS, having gained significant amount of sway during the Civil War, had quickly thrown the support behind Hadrich when the lines were crossed. Those members of the SS overtly loyal to Himmler had, for the most part, joined him in Burgundian exile. The SS in Germany had proven their loyalty to the true Fuhrer. Gile had already moved to take command of the region and currently leaderless, leaderless organization that occupied it. Of all, out of all the men who could have assumed control over the Waffen SS in the time of the crisis, Hadrich was certainly grateful it was Herbert Otto Gila who had emerged victorious. For as much as Buhler did in advancing Hadrich's plans, Gila had always been significantly sturdier. The general was also one of the only SS men left that Hadrich truly trusted. Though, of course, his aid would be missing Hadrich's own inner circle, the Fuhrer had decided Gila could do more to stop Himmler's plans by ensuring the FS, Waffen SS's somewhat questionable loyalty. A stab in the back was the last thing Hadrich needed now. Regardless, how could the commando stop keep order in the lands without a commander? And yet, Hadrich almost regretted sending Gila away, for as, for as full of doubts and questions as the Fuhrer was, Gila had nothing but stalwart and dutiful in obeying him. He did not even question Hadrich's departure from Hitler, or Himmler, and nor his de deviation from those national socialist ideals. Gila seemed almost at times to convince Hadrich of the truth within his own ideas and actions when he was struck by doubts. Now Hadrich faced a greater challenge of having to convince himself. Belief is a powerful, powerful thing. Uh, yeah, I would like to reintegrate these guys. Actually, it would be really good for us, but we need a little bit more loyalty. Um, how do we get more loyalty? Do we just do stuff for them? Yeah, there's a lot of people leaning towards Himmler. That is not good. I don't like that. So if I make a mistake, obviously I'll do stuff off screen to get that rectified. I used oh that's the right. Man in the High Castle. Dietrich's little kingdom. The Schwarze Band. The work goes on. Herr Dönitz. Approaching the pilots. Morals mean nothing in times of war. Ah. Middleman, 
talk. Wow, there's so much here. There's so much. I don't even know what to do. So, we have... We, we can't do anything with those guys. The Berserker group here, like... We gotta do Frycore, Berserker. The Lufafa. Lufafa would be good. Let's do the Lufafa one, then. Ooh, approach the pilots. Cool. So, Johannes Steinhoff is no friend of the SS, but he's one of the Reich's greatest flying aces and a lot of commander of the Luftwaffe. With most of the surviving Luftwaffe and a sizable Heer contingent, he's established a base in the Regensburg in a desperate attempt to survive. Steinhoff's uh, people are hemmed on in by the SS and crying out for a savior. That savior could be Hadrish. Would it not be right and just for the fear to protect them from the predations of traitors and madmen alike? Steinhoff would be obliged to display gratitude in such a case. I do apologize for me not n knowing what exactly to do here, but this is my very first time seeing all this stuff. The price of trust. It'll be up to you, Hadrish. Came Spado's tinny voice from the receiver, lodged precariously between the fierce cheek and shoulder. But so long as you stand against Himmler, I will be with you, but I can't speak for anyone else unless they're under my command. Hadrish resists the urge to grind his teeth in frustration. Yes, yes. He sat down the last file, secretary had passed him, and looked and took up the phone in a free hand again. This is going to be hell, Spado. You're going you're asking that I try to undo thirty years of the Hale's damned sectarianism in the space of a few conversations. A tense moment followed, and Hadrish regretted the choice of words for the briefest fraction of a second. Distrust runs both ways, Hadrish, Spado replied without a hint of insincerity. It can be undone in the same fashion. If you can't trust them, trust me my judgment at least. They also have Germany in the end. Use that to unite them, not your office. Hadrish grunted as a farewell and dropped the receiver into us into a hook. Trust? Trust hasn't existed in his lexicon until recently. Distrust was part and parcel of intel intelligence work, for nobody save one superior was ever above suspicion. Where would Hitler have ended up if he continued to trust that pig Rome? Not as a ruler of Europe, surely. Trust was for the unimaginative, for a family he'd suppose. He trusted Lena, mostly. His progeny, definitely. His subordinates, more or less. But these, an but these names, these animals... He picked up the folder that had given him pause a few months prior, and almost made himself hang up on Spado for the implication. Pichovitz, Kamazir, Kazimierz, a Pole and a slave, a leader of the rebellion in Prussia. The other is Gelen, Steinhoff, Wegener. Those were German names, at least, but this? If this was the fault of trust, it was bitter indeed. Hadrich found it not to his liking. I'll need a drink after this. And I just realized, Belgian National Order does exist. Ah, uh, Degrel. High honors. Rest Restorationist fervor. Oh, not bad. <clears throat> but it looks like we're just surrounded on all sides, which really sucks, but whatever. Victory for the... Oh, Italy. So we've fallen apart, and Italy turns into democracy. The OFN must be really loving this right now. Now let's get the event for him, probably. It could be an event for the pilots, probably. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, maybe not. Cool. Here we are, down here. For the good of the Luftwaffe, a new decisions will be made, refueled and rearmed. We lose some fuel, which is totally fine with me. I don't care. Or, for the good of Germany, new decisions, stable and secure. Slightly increases moderate factional opinion. For the good of, for the good of Germany, refueled and rearmed. Mm. He will fold the moment we start putting pressure on. Slightly increases moderate factional power, or opinion, I should say, opinion. For the good of Germany... For the good of the Luftwaffe. Uh, I'm going to go with this one because it sounds like what this is what we should do. The best way to win over Steinhoff is providing what he needs. He showed him fuel, ammo, spare parts, and manpower. All things that we can give him in exchange for an alliance. As a pragmatic man, he's unlikely to turn us down, especially given his empathy for the people under his care. This tactical approach will cost us time and resources, but will pay off in the long run. The more the Fuhrer shows his generous side, the more likely people are to be believe it truly exists. That would be most useful. Oh. What can we do here? Show, hide... Oh, we can integrate them. Oh, eventually. Yes, that would be good. And that would give us a, a few more nukes. Yes. That would be very, very good. Nuremberg. Oh, what what, the, what happened here? What the heck? Oh, uh, oh god. They're, oh, they got this one. Westfalen. Oh, crap. Well, then. Refueled and rearmed. With arms and fuel flowing to them, the Luftwaffe armaments will become a potent force again. Burgundy lacks a substantial amount of air power, so when combined with their own forces, the Luftwaffe will con constitute a significant advantage in our favor. The ability to strike the traitor in his home should not be underestimated. There's little glory in bombing fellow Aryans, but it must be done. Just another sacrifice of blood and ash upon the altar of victory. More militarist factional support. Um, this will control two, three, four. That is not bueno, I will say that, to say the least. Oh, fast track fuel shipments? Yes. Yes, yes. Provide spare parts. It's fine. Whatever. 
Oh, oh, they got the National Order. That sucks. But whatever. There's not really much we can do about that. Wow, that that looks really bad. Untersteinmark, huh? Monaco exists. Refueled and rearmed. Enemy side by side. Angriffe Gruppe Steiner. Three armies. Oh, we can't do some of this stuff. Oh, these guys don't exist anymore. Well... Dealers Deutsche SS, I guess. Favorable news. The SS Commando Stab has fallen under the control of the, S the Führer's close ally and head of the national security, Herbert Otto Gilliam. This completely negates the need to fight for loyalty of the Waffen SS, as any opposition to Hadrich can simply be expunged by the commander with the state's blessing. Moreover, Gilliam is unquestionably loyal to Hadrich, and one of the few men who's whom that can be said. Once upgunned and properly equipped, his forces will be valued addition will be a valued addition to our collection. Undercutting Himmler by denying him control of the Commando Stab couldn't have been easier. This is just nuts. Just absolutely nuts. Um, so, Nuremberg. We gotta go Nuremberg and the Berserkers. Nuremberg, Berserkers. Actually, oh, we, we got, yeah, 33%. Nice, that's good. Nuremberg and Berserkers. I don't care what it costs. Um, yes. It's not bad. Waffen SS joins the faction. City of Iron? Nuremberg. Oh, yeah, we, got, we have to do this one. City of Iron. And Skaltenbrunne. Now there is a name worthy of respect. He bears the marks of a true Aryan in his scars and the strength of a true Aryan in his form. With ice in his veins and iron for his spine, there are a few allies more desirable in all of the Reich. It is unfortunate, then, that he is such an ardent Himmlerite. With a heavy heart, but resolute in our duty. We must snuff out this little light of the Aryan spirit so that our race can survive. That'd be good. Alright, provide SS advisors. Sure. Donate additional amp stuff. Command power is easier to just get rid of first. Tomsk unifies Central Siberia. Well, good, good job, Tomsk. I'm just waiting for any other event, any th other decision that we can see, because I hope we do well. I hope we do well. Hope you guys hope we do well as well, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Anything else? Fast track fuel shipments? You are still trying to influence a moderate warlord. Oh, it feels like China, 1930s or 20s. Oof. A little bit of lag there, eh? And Leanne takes over Britain government. Bloody towns for Brittany. Donate additional ammunitions, munitions. Sure, why not? It'll reintegrate them. Good. When removed, should be modified. More attack, defense, army XP. Nice. City, city of iron. Pressure from all sides. Claire warned them? No, no, no. Breaking the city free. The outskirts of Nuremberg have been transformed into a giant concentration camp by Kaltenbrunner. Quite admirable from a technical perspective, but its imprisonment of the loyal German citizens is unacceptable, given that it is on the orders of a usurper. The shell of iron casing the city is strong but brittle, and we've found a crack. There exist thousands of citizens and prisoners of war within the camps surrounding Nuremberg, agitating for freedom. And Kaltenbrunner does not have the numbers to hold them all. Regardless of whether they are allies or enemies during the Burger Krieg, the Führer needs them. Let us open up weapon smuggling routes and see what kind of men they are. Oh, show idealist out. Nuremberg, good. It seems like we're doing okay now. It seems like we're doing okay-ish. 33, 33, 33. We gotta get these guys, and then maybe Berserker. I don't know if we'll actually be able to get them. Where is Berserker? Ah, they're neutral, which is fine. The children of Spartacus hate everyone. Loyal to Hadrish, good. And then Nuremberg is slowly being convinced to our side, which is awesome. So I think we're doing okay now. Careful balance of trust. Manager coalition we built as well as an overview. I want to make sure we get all these people under so what we really want with us first. Oh, oh, but, oh, that would be pretty good too. But we must free ourselves. We gotta wait. Eyes and ears. Oh, the wannabe. There's so many here. The final hurdle. Okay, so we need, as I said before, Nuremberg. But we've already worked on him. So berserker, as well as the children of whoever. Vega line, Vega line, Vega line, Vega line. Ooh, Steiner, Empower the SS. That, sounds, that looks really cool. Dernitz, the work goes on. Last of the Militarists. The Pretenders. Battle of Wits. Hmm, three armies. Allies too thick and thin. It's not bad. Pragmatist support shall be increased. All as an Osterreich. Man or Dishonor. Well, man in the High Castle. You know what? Death's Hand. Freistadt Preussen. 
Lotharingen, final hurdle, an old friend. Well, let's go and do this one up here first, then. Careful with balance of trust. As the fear of coalition grows, it becomes more difficult to hold together. Lots of men are not gifted with the clarity of purpose that a life in service of the right bestows. These people, these bickering people, of all their own interests, many conflicting, which may undermine the great cause if not kept in check. Threats, bribes, coercion, nothing is off the table. We fight not only for the salvation of our race, but for the entire miserable world. Degenerates and all. Failure is not an option. Anything we must do is permissible. But I think that's what we're going to end today's episode here. It's been long, and we have done a lot of things here. We've done quite a few things and learned that we got to do a lot of stuff. So. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we will attempt to do whatever we can to save the world. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.